One day, my husband casually asked about our finances, wondering how much money we actually have in our safe. I laughed and guessed, probably around $700,000 in total. However, the very next day when I returned home, I found a signed divorce document on the living room table. Both my husband and the safe had disappeared. My name is Olivia, and at 56 years old, I am a hardworking housewife who still puts in diligent hours at my job. My passion for saving money was instilled early by my mother, who opened a savings account for me when I was a child. She taught me that each deposit would make the balance in my bank book grow, an idea I found incredibly appealing. Starting with just a dollar, I was thrilled to see my savings increase bit by bit as the interest accumulated, even if it was just a few cents each year. This early joy blossomed into a lifelong love for finance, guiding me to a career as a financial planner specializing in asset management. During college, a friend came to me with news about an old childhood friend, Scott, who was struggling with gambling debts and the financial burdens left by his parents. Intrigued, I agreed to meet Scott to offer some guidance. He was a charming man with an engaging smile. Despite his financial woes, there was something quite endearing about his troubled look. At my friend's urging, I helped him out, little knowing that this would lead to a complex series of events. Looking back, I might have had a small crush on Scott, but I could never have predicted the twists and turns that followed. I suggested he consolidate his debts and lower his monthly payments to get his finances back on track. Soon after, Scott and I began dating despite my friend's warnings against it. We pressed on and eventually married. This decision would lead to unexpected challenges and dramatic changes in my life. I firmly believed that marrying Scott would enable us to tackle his family's financial issues together. Even though I had a stable income for someone my age, most of Scott's earnings went towards clearing his existing debts. I urged him to cut financial ties with his parents to avoid further debt accumulation. To help manage his expenses, I provided Scott with a monthly allowance of $2,000. When Scott decided to sever these financial dependencies, his decision was met with outrage from his mother, who berated him as an ungrateful son. His father also criticized me, labeling me a thieving cat. Exhausted by the constant pressure of his parents' debts, Scott finally reached his breaking point. He firmly told them he wasn't just an ATM and that he was doing his best to manage his own life. He returned to me relieved to be free from the recurring arguments about money with his parents. Shortly after, we were blessed with the arrival of our son, Gary, a handsome boy who was the spitting image of his father, and quickly became my pride and joy. As Gary grew, it became apparent that he had inherited some of Scott's traits, like his lack of discipline and indecisiveness. Over the years, Scott struggled with borrowing money from predatory lenders, dealing with loan sharks, and occasionally manipulating friends into lending him money for gambling. Despite these challenges, I managed to keep him on the right track. After 23 years, we had managed to reduce his debt to about $113,000, nearing full repayment. However, a significant turning point occurred when Scott received a call that his father had collapsed and was hospitalized. Scott left work early and sent me a message apologizing for breaking our promise to avoid contact with his parents. He explained that his father had suffered a minor stroke. While it wasn't life-threatening, it was serious enough that he should not overexert himself. Scott expressed his desire to stay with his parents for a while to offer support during this difficult time. Despite my offer to join him, Scott insisted that I stay focused on my work and avoid the potential mistreatment from his parents. This decision marked a poignant moment in our lives as we navigated the complexities of family obligations and personal commitments. I had provided Scott with some extra funds to help with hospital visits, 
anticipating that his parents might be struggling with medical bills. Since then, Scott began visiting his parents more often, each visit costing between $450 to $650 from my pocket. It appeared that my in-laws were facing financial hardships and depended on Scott for support. Though these amounts added up to roughly $3,200 to $3,800 each month, I decided to ignore it for the time being. A year had elapsed since my father-in-law's health scare, and both in-laws had visibly aged. I felt they needed someone to support them during this challenging time. As for me, my perennial hobby was always about saving money. One day, while I was pulling out my bank book from the safe with a smile, Scott, who usually paid little attention to my financial habits, curiously asked, Hey, how much money do we actually have in that bank account you always look at so happily? I casually replied, It's about $700,000 now. However, the following morning, I discovered divorce papers on the living room table, and both Scott and the safe had disappeared. At breakfast, despite the shock, I couldn't help but smile, realizing Scott had been eyeing the money in the safe. Moreover, he had planned to take the entire safe with him. Although not the sharpest tool in the shed, the thought of him trying to physically carry the entire safe almost made me burst out laughing. In our home, we have a red cat named Bella, and we installed a pet camera to watch her adorable antics, which brought joy to my days. During lunch breaks, I would tune in to watch the camera, finding delight in Bella's endearing behavior. One day, as I turned on the camera, an unexpected scene unfolded in our living room. On a weekday, my in-laws and my husband, Scott, were having a surprising conversation. They marveled at the nice house Scott was living in and praised what they thought was his excellent salary. Scott's father, with a hint of pride, mentioned his own decent earnings but lamented that I controlled it, leaving him with just a $2,000 allowance. They comforted Scott, suggesting he deserved more in subtly hinting that he was being shortchanged by me. This revelation was startling and shed new light on the dynamics within our family. It seemed as though Scott, influenced by his parents, had forgotten all about the hard work I had put into managing his debts. He nodded in agreement with his parents, seemingly oblivious to the sacrifices I had made on his behalf. I wondered what thoughts were running through their minds. In the past, Scott had been overwhelmed by debts from his parents, obligated to hand over cash every month, which made it hard for him to manage his own finances. Now he was complaining that it wasn't fair for him to receive only $1,000 a month, especially when his wife had substantial savings in the bank. As Scott aired his grievances, my in-law's eyes sparkled eagerly, exchanging glances as they awaited his reaction. How much is in that bank account of yours? They prodded, leaning forward with anticipation. Last I checked, I think it was around $510,000, or maybe $610,000, Scott responded vaguely. They pressed further, questioning whether that money rightfully belonged to him. Despite the considerable effort I had invested in reducing his debt from nearly $430,000 to just $115,000, it seemed that Scott's perspective had been swayed by his parents. His easygoing and indecisive nature, despite his charm, led him to side with their views. Witnessing this conversation through the pet camera, with my hard-earned savings potentially at risk, left me utterly devastated. Tears streamed down my face. As I sat at my work desk, watching the scene unfold on my phone, I had been diligently managing our living expenses from Scott's income. Allocating most of it to repaying his debts, the realization that all the efforts to secure our financial future were being undermined by his parents' manipulation was heart-wrenching. Despite providing Scott with a $1,000 monthly allowance for my own earnings and explaining this arrangement to him, 
it seemed as if he had forgotten everything. Over the past 23 years, I had given myself to him unreservedly, but the current circumstances left me feeling desolate and pitiful. My heart ached as though I was drowning in my own sorrow, and I felt as if I was on the verge of breaking. Nevertheless, I made sure to record their conversation and sent the footage to my son. Overwhelmed by the emotional strain, I left work early that day, seeking solace at my usual bar, where I shared my woes with the bartender. His gentle words of comfort helped me, and in that moment, any lingering affection and intoxication for my husband dissipated. I expressed my thanks to the bartender and looked forward to a more hopeful encounter in the future. After leaving the bar, I returned home with renewed determination. In my study, I contemplated how to retrieve the bank book that was hidden inside the safe. A daunting task, but I was ready to devise a plan to prove that underestimating me was their mistake. It was clear that gathering evidence was the first crucial step. I diligently monitored the pet camera daily, and to my dismay, more unsettling truths began to emerge. My husband was bringing a young woman into our home during what were supposed to be his work hours, treating her as if she were a regular guest approximately two times a week. Witnessing my husband's infidelity crushed any remaining desire for tranquility. During moments watching our cat Bella, who also seemed distressed, and began to avoid the area. This betrayal not only ruined my cherished relaxation time, but was also an unforgivable act of deceit. Determined to seek justice, I vowed to take stern action against them. One day, while monitoring the pet camera from work, I discovered it wasn't just the young woman causing trouble. My in-laws had returned to our house. I overheard them plotting, is everything arranged to take that bank book from Olivia? They asked each other with sly grins. This revelation fueled my resolve. I was more determined than ever to protect my interests and show them that I was not someone to be trifled with. The next steps were clear. Safeguard my assets and confront the betrayal head-on. I responded with confidence when my father-in-law expressed concern about the weight of the safe, offering to help. I assured him that I could handle it. Knowing well that my husband Scott, though handsome, wasn't the sharpest in my heart, I resolved to outmaneuver these people who were scheming at such depths. I imagined using the funds from the bank book to go to a casino as a family and rebuild our lives. Despite a pang of guilt about using Olivia's savings, my in-laws had convinced Scott that their actions were justified for his happiness. They urged him to swiftly divorce the woman he was seeing and leave the divorce papers on the table, eagerly anticipating the money from the bank book and the arrival of his new wife. Scott reluctantly agreed, and their unsettling plan began to unfold. Back at my office desk, sipping coffee, I recorded the scene unfolding on my phone screen. Oddly, I found myself somewhat understanding of their motives realizing the extent they would go for money. Yet I was no longer upset or sad. Instead, I felt a burning determination to give them a taste of their own medicine. The day finally came when my husband inquired about the money in the passbook kept in the vault. Casually, I informed him that it contained about half a million dollars. The next day, upon returning home, I discovered signed divorce papers in the living room and both my husband and the vault were gone. Smirking over breakfast, I acted swiftly. I filed the divorce papers and reached out to my son Gary immediately. Your father finally took the vault, I told him. I can't believe he actually managed to carry it. It's so heavy. This ironic twist, while frustrating, was also a vindication of sorts. I was ready to start the next chapter, free from deceit and manipulation. Armed with the truth and a clear conscience, after informing my son Gary about the unfolding situation with my husband Scott, Gary suggested that it might be time to finally cut ties with him. He questioned whether Scott had managed to take everything from the vault. 
Little did Scott know, I had proactively moved all our savings to an online account, making the physical passbook he stole utterly worthless. Gary advised me to consider filing a police report and strongly recommended hiring a competent lawyer. Feeling grateful for his advice, I decided to sever my legal and emotional ties with Scott. I reached out to a lawyer, one who came highly recommended by my trusted private investigator. Exasperated yet determined, I handed over the recordings from our pet camera, which captured all of Scott's and his parents' underhanded discussions and actions. I provided these to both the police and the lawyer, eagerly awaiting their response to the clear evidence of deceit. Shortly after, Scott, in a state of panic, called me. He was frantic, questioning why the passbook was empty and where the half a million dollars had gone. I refused to engage with him directly. Calm and collected, I instructed him to communicate through my lawyer if he had any questions or concerns, and then I blocked his number to prevent any further direct contact. I officially reported the incident to the police and provided the same recording to my lawyer, reinforcing the seriousness of the case. Feeling a sense of relief, I allowed myself a moment to reflect. Karma is a real pain, I thought, satisfied with the turn of events and reassured that justice would soon be served. Not long after taking these steps, I received a call from the police. They informed me that they had apprehended Scott. Although, unfortunately, the vault had been damaged. It appeared that in his desperation, Scott had forced it open, and in a fit of rage upon finding it empty, he or possibly his accomplices had set it on fire. The contents inside, though mostly old papers and some personal effects, were completely destroyed. Despite it being his first criminal offense, the nature of Scott's actions, breaking into a safe, attempted theft, and property damage, meant that he spent several days in police custody. His parents, who were implicated in the planning, but not the direct action, were released but given a stern warning by the authorities. After his release, Scott's desperation spiraled further out of control. He broke into our former residence, demanding entry and claiming that everything was just a small prank. He insisted that we were still married, causing a significant scene that alarmed the neighbors and required police intervention once again. This final act of desperation by Scott only underscored the necessity of the precautions I had taken. It was clear that I had made the right decision to protect myself legally and financially. The entire ordeal was emotionally draining, but also a powerful reminder of my own resilience. I had managed to stay one step ahead throughout this tumultuous period, safeguarding not only my financial assets, but also my peace of mind. Now as I looked forward to a quieter, more stable future, I felt a profound sense of closure and readiness to move forward. The tumult of the past months had been challenging, but reaffirmed my capabilities and strength. I was ready to rebuild, focusing on my well-being and that of my son, free from the deceit and manipulation that had marred my previous life with Scott. After the latest incident involving my ex-husband, I didn't hesitate to act swiftly. I immediately called the police, and he was taken into custody once again. Following this, I contacted my lawyer to begin the legal proceedings necessary to obtain a restraining order against him and to explore the possibility of seeking compensation for the emotional distress caused by his infidelity and the subsequent chaos he brought into our lives. Although I had reservations about the feasibility of securing financial support from his economically strained family, I was resolved to pursue a lemony. To my surprise, shortly after initiating these proceedings, his mistress transferred $118,000 in alimony. However, the relationship faltered soon after the vault incident as the money depleted. Their commitment to each other became painfully clear that my ex-husband, his parents, and his mistress were all struggling to keep their financial heads above water. 
My ex-husband, who was nearing retirement, unfortunately lost his job amidst this turmoil. His parents, trying to scrape by, found low-paying jobs in cleaning services, but were barely managing to make ends meet. Meanwhile, despite his efforts working three part-time jobs, my ex-husband's ongoing gambling addiction continued to undermine any semblance of financial stability. In light of these challenges, I stood firm on my alimony demands. I instructed my lawyer to convey a clear message. Real apologies must be demonstrated through actions, not just empty words. If they truly regretted their actions, they needed to show it tangibly, which in this context meant financially. Despite the opportunities I had offered my ex-husband to clear his debts and start anew, under the influence of his gambling-addicted parents, he squandered them. I found myself reflecting on my own financial security. The $700,000 I had saved was the fruit of a lifetime of diligent saving and wise financial management. Realizing the importance of enjoying life while securing my future, I decided it was time to focus on personal fulfillment. I took pleasure in the simple joys of life, such as updating my bank book. I'd also opened a new bank account, ensuring better management and security of my finances. Currently, I lead a serene life with my cherished red cat, Bella, who provides constant companionship and comfort. My son occasionally visits, bringing with him stories of his own life adventures and his girlfriend, which adds a layer of joy to my days. Now my priorities center around self-care and planning for the future. One of my first actions was to consider the purchase of a new, larger vault, a practical measure to ensure the safety of my accumulated savings. This step was not just about security, but also about reclaiming control over my life and my assets. With Bella by my side, I find myself more content and happier than I've ever been. The tumult of the past, marked by betrayal and financial strife, is now behind me. I look forward to a peaceful and fulfilling future, knowing that I have the resilience and independence to face whatever may come. This period of tranquility and empowerment is not just a phase, but a new chapter in my life, one that I embrace wholeheartedly. As I continue to thrive and find happiness in the simplicity and security of my new life,